Welcome back to the Sports Card Culture Podcast number 13. Lucky 13 indeed. Lucky 13, January 25th, 2021. I keep reminding, remembering that we're actually in 2021. I had a week's worth of uh, record keeping that I had to change back to 2021. Yeah, I went to write a check and I was like, wait, no, it's 2021. So those of you listening, we're glad you're with us again. Uh, Make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Um... If you got questions, just a reminder, keep sending them. We're going to cover at least one of them today. Yeah, we're absolutely going to answer any questions that we get. And we're up about 50 subscribers. It's awesome. Um, in the last 28 days. So that's Beautiful. pretty cool. So thanks to you guys for tuning in again. What a week in sports. Yeah, so let's not bury the lead and lead it for the end of the podcast. Uh, playoffs happened yesterday. Couple of good Playoffs. football games. Playoffs. We're we trying to win a game over here. Yeah. So. Playoffs. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about Bucks Packers first. What's your thoughts on the game in general? Honestly, I was. This I'm sure this is going to come as a shock, John. I was absolutely blown away by the intelligence of Tom Brady again. Tom Brady yeah. literally is the smartest quarterback we've ever seen he surpassed Peyton Manning some of the stuff he did yesterday is uh, so next level like if I sat down with you and an offensive coordinator and a and a wide film angle and showed you what the little nuances of what Brady did yesterday he literally looks guys open he literally throws guys open he played that throw to Scotty Mitchell with a second left in the end of the half oh yeah yeah. by the way I knew that was gonna happen I knew that was going to happen. So He's unless you're best. arguing that I'm the most cerebral quarterback in the world, because I looked at that and I said, well, there's eight seconds left. They're not going to make a play and try to kick a field goal. He's going to bomb it in the end zone. And why, how, why how they you? let somebody get behind them there, like, they should have been pretty wise, It was unbelievable. I mean, it's inexcusable. We'll, we'll talk about that. There's, but, but there was a couple coaching decisions. Hold on a second, Clint. You just said Tom Brady is the most analytical quarterback. We're going to have to he's, listen to that. Then Peyton Manning. Yes, he's, he's – No. Yes. Uh, yes. Hard no. I, he, I, he knows more from his experience and can adapt in real time. He is literally the worst nightmare for a defensive coordinator because Brady literally puts his guys in the best situation on every play. He he literally allows them to succeed in a way. Other quarterbacks just don't. They just don't. I, do I it. think we'll if we get football guys listening to this. I think we'll have quite the conversation. And I want to have the conversation because Matt. we'll even talk technicals like yesterday. When he had single coverage, watch how he looked off safeties every but single time. But then I got a question. How many picks did he throw yesterday in the second half? And how many, how, how many were his fault? One of them. Well, Mike Evans. Mike was Evans, that Evans that went off, off his hands. Yeah. So, Mike Evans, you got to catch that ball. I, yes, it was a little bit high and hard, but that, well, it's your job to catch the yeah, ball. Yeah, right? yeah, fair enough. Now, the other one, he was getting hit trying to throw it away, and Evans has to come back and that one I didn't the ball. See, I so, it was one. like a duck that literally didn't carry out of bounds, and Evans – didn't come back on the ball. He just let the guy pick it. it was hey, don't like throw my guy under the bus every time. Yeah, I mean, I dare you. I'll be honest. Oh, the, by the way, did you see that masterful catch Evans made in the first half? Yeah. In the first quarter? And, and Godwin bailed himself out after dropping one. He made a, a phenomenal contested yep. catch where he bobbled it. And I'll say this much. The Bucks have yet to play a complete game in the yeah, playoffs. that's true. And they still went to Lambeau and beat the best team in the NFC. And can you imagine from t- uh, – hey, Think about this from Aaron Rodgers' perspective. He's used to Tom Brady in the in the AFC just running the table, and yeah, now yeah. Tom goes, "You know what? I'm going to try this from the other side. <laughs> let's. Why don't we come over to the NFC and run it back this way?" And and, and let's Aaron's do like, Lambo before we like, go there. How do I how do I get out of this guy's way? Literally, like everywhere I go, Tom Brady's like. <laughs> Well, how about this? Uh, uh, they did what the Vikings could not do, and it's the uh, first time a home team is hosting the Super Bowl. Oh, first time a home team. We had the and of opportunity. Course it's Tampa, of all After places. the Minneapolis Miracle, the table was set, and we didn't even make it competitive. So, yeah. to all the Packer fans out there, uh, you know, at least you had a good game. The Vikings don't even show up in games like that. So, we just, you know, at least I don't they know. Got I, to I was, I, so, I gave you uh, the 20 bucks to go mm-hmm. to Vegas with. Yep. Uh, so, I won on that one. And then, um, but I'm always happy when the Packers lose. And, Can I, I tell and, you about and by the way, there was one play, and it's a knockless play, where uh, Aaron Rodgers just got rocked. Yeah. And it just made me so happy. It just to see him on the ground. And just I was mad. walking around the Circa Sportsbook, cheering for Brady, and then also when I was around Packer fans doing the skull chant, <laughs> and it was hilarious. They were not happy. They're I mean, like, it wow, started out. The, that's not the Buccaneers' chant, sir. Yeah. Well, this is this is. <laughs> 
Uh, every Viking fan out there is cheering for the Bucks. So, uh, there um, was let a me, lot let, of Packer fans in Vegas. A lot of them. Let me say this back to the game for a second. The Bucks defense is way better than people no, I agree with give that. credit for. Jason Pierre-Paul, after blowing off two of his that. fingers – that with a, with a, with a, with a, uh, a, a firework accent, he played phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barrett, Shaq Barrett played phenomenal. Like their D line put more pressure on Rodgers. Um, they had five sacks, I think, right? I mean, that one guy I just sold a silver auto way too low for him. It was in one of Levante, my D- David, the linebacker. Uh-uh. Can't think of who I it mean, was. they got they got some pieces. D- Dominic and Sue. I mean, Jason Pierre-Paul won a Super Bowl when he actually beat Tom Brady for the, with the Giants. Oh yeah, fair enough. With An Eli. Old yep. So fair I mean. Enough. It's gonna be. Think about this though. The NFL could they have scripted it oh, any better? Yeah, there, you literally. It's like getting to watch Jordan play LeBron. I'm, we never I, got it. I and, know I'm not supposed to swear and I'm not going to, but this is the NFL's wet dream. Of oh, football. it's just. I mean, it's literally. They could not, and they're like the only way we can get Tom and Pat in a Super Bowl is Tom. You got to go to the NFC and look what he shows up with a team <laughs> who's average in one season. LeBron James did not do that with the Lakers. He went to the Lakers. And it took him a year and a half, right? Yeah. That first year he was out a little bit, but they didn't even make the he playoffs. Kept they didn't yeah. make the playoffs. Look at look at what Tom Brady has done with a much better defense than he had well, in New let's England. Be clear, but the Buccaneers are a very well built team. Phenomenal team. Yeah. They have a ton of weapons. Leonard Fournette had an amazing run. I mean, yeah, they they, they got run. some play from guys that Tyler Johnson, obviously the the big interference call on him. I mean, and here's the best thing is uh, for the Super Bowl. Uh, I I would assume Winfield will be back for the Super Bowl. I hope so. And you could tell that cost them. They're, the oh, yeah. backup safety missed a few tackles on run plays that were it Winfield, was pretty bad. You know, we like Tyler Johnson, but Winfield is a special talent. Yes. He's run. probably more valuable to them than Tyler Johnson because they have oh, more receivers, whereas Winfield's like – Well, Johnson's you know. number five, really. Yeah. I mean, but it's, it's a good number Well, five. Brown's out now, Antonio Brown. So but because will Brown, Brown be back? That's, that's I, another great question. So he just had a bum wheel, right? Yeah, yeah so two, two weeks off, I mean – Three weeks off, I, I, yeah. How excited am I for this game, right? I mean, you literally oh, have Brady game. going for seven, becoming the the goat of goats, and then you have the face of the NFL who's already won one. Like And like you mentioned last time, uh, Tom Brady not only will have more than Jordan, but he'll, he'll have more Super Bowl wins than every other franchise. Every other franchise. In the history of football. Did you know this? I heard this stat today. This is phenomenal. Tom Brady has been to more Super Bowls in his career, percentage-wise, out of every season I he's played, that. than Steph Curry – Making a three point, right? Uh, so the so the goal. way it summed yeah. up was there's a better there's chance. a better percentage chance, chance. that yes. Tom Brady will get to the Super Bowl yes. than Curry will make a three point shot. That's mind boggling. <laughs> That's crazy. Literally, That's the guy the guy's made it to forty seven percent of Super Bowls <laughs> so in his career. Crazy. Every almost every other year, Tom Brady's in the Super Bowl. I mean, I loved it, man. I I was I I loved. Now I will say the Packers. I think blew it. Like I think them going for a field goal there made yeah, I had zero missed sense. That part of the game, I was. Uh, um, oh, you missed the end. You missed the yeah, important part. Yeah, I missed that end. I had to read about. I had to read about that. So but literally, they they're down eight on the nine yard line, fourth yeah. and goal, and instead of taking a chance at scoring a touchdown and tying it with a two point conversion, with two minutes, oh. like just over two minutes, they decide to kick a field goal. Which really doesn't do much other than now you still you have, have to score a touchdown. And score a touchdown for the win. So they they had the chance they had the two minute warning and three timeouts. But the reality was when you kick a field goal, now you're kicking off. Instead of if you go for it there on the goal line, you don't you get stopped. You're pinning them deep at least yeah. field position wise. It, it was maybe unexplainable. Like or, uh, the fact that they didn't give Rodgers an opportunity to tie the game. And then obviously when Tom got the ball, you knew they were never giving. No, it back. I didn't. I didn't. See it, but do you think that'll be like the Marshawn Lynch deal, or not? not Very well, could be. I, I heard Packer fans calling for their coach already. Like they're just like, there's no explanation. They literally, oh, I heard people I, say it was the worst coaching decision they've ever I seen been in a big so game. So happy at the casino, oh, just yeah, laughing just at the Packer fans. Speaking of that, you want to hear the biggest bet I saw? Yeah. So you were starting to say this to me before the podcast. I'm like, don't tell me now. What's okay, c- a couple things. Big. So, uh, do you, you guys watch UFC? Do you watch any the the yeah, the, the kind of fight? I saw, I saw the highlights. Yeah. So that fight, McGregor was actually a <laughs> kind of he, he was a he was a huge favorite. Was he? Minus oh. three thirty, which means you have to bet three thirty to win a hundred. And then what was three the, and a half the underdog? So that means he was the opposite. It's actually plus. I think it was like, like plus seventy five. Yeah, it's, it, there's a there's it's a not exactly even, no no it's not even because yeah. then there's no juice, but it's like it was like plus two eighty or something like that. Wow. So literally a hundred dollars to two eighty. 
a guy I was sitting next to playing Ultimate Texas Hold'em while I was waiting to play poker okay. uh, was a, is a Wall Street guy who we got chatting. I'm like, hey, what are you, what are you in town for? He's like, I'm here to put put a bet on the the UFC fight. I'm like, oh yeah, you know who do you got? He's like, I got McGregor. I'm like, how much? He's I like, I have McGregor, a hundred thousand dollars. Thousand dollars to win. It would have been to win thirty three thousand dollars. And he, wow. if he would have rolled it the other way, he would have won three hundred almost three hundred k. Say he lost a hundred. Yeah, I can 30. lose it. No, yeah, for him, he has. Yeah, this guy was a treat. But then I actually. I'm saw, not a big anti one percenter, but eh. I'll say this much. So the bet you made, which was the the Bucks money line and the right. Bills money line, I had a guy in front of me when I was cashing out our our ticket. Yeah. Who was cashing out a ticket? He put ten thousand on the Bucks to win. That paid sixteen thousand. So, so he, he won twenty six thousand. A little more aggressive than I was with my twenty spot. Just, just a little bit. Just a tad. But the reality was the line was so good. A hundred dollars yeah. made one fifty. Right. Like I didn't know that. I with, thought I was gonna with, make like six bucks. With Tom, ten. which so my play for the weekend was actually to pick both the bucks and and the bills. And if you got one of the underdogs yeah. to win, then you, were, you, you made money on made both. Money. You made money overall. Well, you had mentioned that right so, as yeah, we yep. finished that up. So that was. That was awesome. I mean, I um, the Bills actually my biggest bet of the weekend. I lost on that Bills meaningless field goal at the end of the game. They're down three touchdowns. They decide to kick a field goal with a minute and so like, with your bet, your bet so, one point. So, so I had the under at sixty oh, okay. and a half in the Chiefs game, and I had the over at forty six in the Bucks game, and that went clearly over. Sure. And I should have teased the under, obviously, in the Chiefs game, but I, I didn't see the Bills oh, scoring yeah. as many as they so did. I've been debating the Super Bowl. I don't want to skip the Bucks game yeah. or the Bills game, um, but I've been looking at the Super Bowl um, over under because we're going to be in Diamond yep. Joe's. Yep. At a fifty-seven and a half. That's pretty. High. I don't know where to go. I don't like it over I at 57 I want to be under, but I'm thinking no. it's going to be a shootout too. It has to be a shootout. So, but, but I can tease that down. Like, I like it teased down to like fifty one. Yeah, and that's then what I like say. it. You can no, you're so you really can not making much on that. You then. can buy points. Um, you could tease. You could literally tease it fifteen zero. points down. <laughs> and zero, it's like zero. you're literally risking a ton to win. One million you know. dollars to win a dime. <laughs> to, uh, it's a little better than that, but yeah, it's it's it is extreme in that sense. So. Zero, zero? Oh, I'll do that all. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually math of line of credit. Zero, zero. Hey, what was the last time the game ended. The game ended. The game ended zero zero. We yeah, know. watch zero zero tie. I'm just losing my ass. Just the <laughs> just the first time ever. <laughs> John made a bat, so we knew it was gonna happen. So obviously, right, Bills but, game. This is the yeah. one takeaway I took from that Bills game was uh, Josh Allen needs to throw the ball away. Yeah, I mean, was that four times? He's just running, taking sacks in style. Yeah, but Tarkinson used to eventually go forward as well. Yeah, he only got half of it down. He. Runs really well, but that is danger. One of the, I'll say this: one of the things that makes Tom Brady. I'm coming back to Brady on everything here. One of the things that makes Brady I'm so shocked. good is that he doesn't. He recognizes his weakness yeah. is his athletic ability running, but his ability to move in the pocket to throw. He doesn't bail out quick. Like Josh Allen doesn't stand in the pocket quite as long right, as he right, could, right. partly because he's so gifted. Like Tom's like, no, that's not an option, which actually allows him to make late throws. Well, Tom Brady will also, when he's feeling a lot of pressure, he'll start throwing towards the ground. Yep. And so it leads to a lot of incompletion, but it yes. doesn't lead to a lot of Sk- interceptions. Skips him in there. Yep. And Knowing so how to throw it away. catch it or yep. it's going to skip. It's those little things as a, as an experience, like 22 which years. Which complained about, about right. Tom Brady. Like, yep. It's like – you know, you can hear those footsteps, and you're just throwing these balls on the ground and all these incomplete passes, but he's not throwing picks. Yeah. Now, yesterday he did, which – which, think about this. The Bucks had three turnovers, and they still won at Atlanta. Right. So, if they have a clean game turnover-wise, I, I think they could beat the Chiefs. The Chiefs are – they started – I think a, the Chiefs are really The, the Chiefs started a three-point favorite. So much money has come in against on Tampa. Mm-hmm. The line has already moved to one and I a half. really? Yes. So everyone's betting. You don't bet against three points. You do not earlier hey, today. You do not bet against Tom Brady. If you are smart and yeah, you like I money, yeah, I was going to bet Buck as an underdog. I don't know, man. I got a lot of decisions made. By the way, um, just to be very clear. I'm talking about a total budget of like three hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Right. Like for all the bets, I'm going to bet like twenty bets. That's going to be like three hundred bucks. Actually, that's going to be a let, lot. Let me there. let me throw something out there though. Sometimes, rather than making a bunch of bets. 
you're better off making one or two no, better bets. That's not oh, fun. Okay, okay, you the whole point of it is oh, that I bet on every game. But you understand and that I have fun watching it. I don't. Okay, if we're gonna talk, money if time. we're gonna talk logic and reason, one of the one of the things. So in the house, with the house always has juice, right? Yeah, yeah. And the problem is, the more bets you make, the more juice you're paying. The more juice you're paying. So actually, the the guys who win in sports mm. betting are making fewer bets and they're making larger yeah, ones. Yeah, but here's the thing: it's kind of like when I, I think we even mentioned this on a podcast uh, about our friend Matt. He was talking about a poker game. Yep. And I'm like, he's like, well, twenty dollar games. That's not enough money for me to play. Yeah. And I like. You think I'm driving a freaking savage to make forty bucks? Yeah, that's no. Not, I'm there to hang out with my friends. It's and the have experience. Some fun. Yeah, and so some yeah. of it's just like I want to bet on every game because that's been something I've wanted to do since I was ten years old. Right. And so no, and I like that, and I like you know, the, I the like wind, having loss is well, kind of irrelevant. Part of it is you're saying if I have a stake in the game, if I have a horse yeah. in the race, the, watching the game because is the, more, the goal yeah. is to watch the game. The goal Which, isn't to wait for my returns to come in. Exactly. The, the goal is to watch the game. Is like. I'm gonna win six fifty if. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> the, dude, I had the, I had this revelation standing in line at the Circus Sportsbook, which is the largest sports book in the world. They have this outdoor stadium seating, where they have like pools and stuff. It's called Stadium yeah, yeah, Swim, and there's people kind of hanging out. No. Well, I was going so in between games, I went to try to put a bet on the Bills game, and there was literally fifty people deep at each wow. checkout. In this sports book, do they use like floored. live people? Or are they machines? Though? Well, they have computers. There, I, there were some kiosks. I believe you could make your own. Okay. And then there was the live ones where, if you actually wanted to ca- get cash back, if you're cashing a ticket, yeah, yeah. you had to use that. I think because oh, there's enough. so there's only so much you can get out of the machine or whatever. And so I, I assume historically, look, when you made a bet, you would go up to a live person, they'd look it up, they made the bet. You, well, you so player. here's how it works. I actually have the the sports book lines in front of me. You walk up and you have a number. So if I wanted the Bills here, I have a three. I I say, you know, I want a hundred on three one four, which is the Chiefs. Oh, okay, that's line. their code. That, yeah, so you don't have to tell them the game. You don't have to say, oh, I want the Chiefs. Oh over. yeah, especially if there's you know, forty games going on, and oh, like you expect me to know every well, team. And, and because <laughs> they they actually need that code to type in to yeah, make yeah. the ticket. So. And then they're not researching and the, the code, fact they no. don't like the people working there don't necessarily even know what game. Right, right. They don't know who the, you know they don't have to know that. That makes to be able sense. To, and they probably do, them. but yeah, most of them. But like I can get tripped up on teams and yeah, oh for sure. You know, Russell Wealth. Well, Russell well, well as I was sitting there and I was seeing, <laughs> I literally saw a dozen bets, probably over five thousand dollars on on, and I literally looked at my and I thought to myself. First of all, there's a lot. We've been talking about this economically. There's a lot of money in sports, yeah. in sports in general, and in sports betting and in the economy. And then I thought to myself, I'm not surprised sports cards are booming Absolutely. in light of this, with how much interest there was for mm-hmm. these games. I'm also like, if someone Why you know, that, guy, that guy in front in of me, Brady. let's say that guy in front of me just won sixteen thousand dollars. It's like, yeah, I want a Jordan rookie, or I want, right. you know what I mean? Like, well, or or I mean, what's nice about cards is you're not even betting on teams; you're betting on players, players, individual players. Yeah. yeah. And so that you're able to get down to the nitty gritty, I can bet on a guy where his team's never going to win championship. Right. All right. So anything on Bill's game? Um, Josh, I mean, team, I mean, I mean it started very interesting with that that, that fumbled punt, yeah, and then the quick score. Like you felt like, wow, the Bills got some momentum here, and then it just it became clear the Chiefs were that much better. Right. Now, I think the Bills in a few years could, you know, I do think Josh Allen was. Doing that thing with that rookies do, yep. and I would you know you can refer to him as a rookie in the playoffs, yeah. right? And he's doing it where he is trying too hard to make something happen. Yes. Whereas Tom Brady, with all that experience, is like, I'm just going to take what they're giving me and right. and methodically play this game, this entire game. Right. And so that's what I was seeing on those runs where he lost all those yards. He's just trying to. Make he did, he didn't want to just have an incomplete. He, and he, sometimes it's just better to. Uh, punt and play field position, yeah. then try to get every third and long with a crazy play that loses you 20 yards, which now sets your and defense I, back. I, and I wonder if this is one of the reasons why Lamar Jackson is never going to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Is he is so athletic and has so much ability. I got to think mentally he's like, I don't have to give up on any play. Right. And that that can be a problem. Absolutely. I um, I think I think the Bills' defense uh, – was overmatched, which I thought they were. Okay. I thought it was going to be much lower scoring. Obviously, I yeah. took the under right, sixty, right. and I thought, you know, I th- I think the Chiefs can score thirty, but I don't think the Bills will score that many. I mean, I didn't see the Chiefs; they just kept put, pouring it on, and they got so many weapons. This game, the Super Bowl, is going to be all offense. It's going to be which defense can 
do a little – get a couple more stops. So you think it's going to be a shootout? I mean, I, th- I would think it's going over 55. Wow. That's I would think it's going but over think, 55. So, so you say take the over but tease that line down. Yeah, I was like a higher percentage play where you're picking up some points and okay. giving up a little bit of profit to – win you know? all right the other news since um the last uh, uh podcast was philip rivers retired yeah um so right as of right now he's fifth all time in yardage uh 63,440 and he's fifth all time with 421 touchdowns is he a hall of famer clint yeah i don't think it's gonna be first ballot um i think he he one of his strengths, I think, is how many games he played consecutively. Second to mm-hmm. only Brett Favre as far as Iron longevity, Man. Iron Man type. Never missed games. Like uh, People like him. Yeah, he was loved by his teammates. He, he was loved by his opponents. Yeah. Like all the trash talking For he sure. did where he never swore. And yeah. guys like, this guy's insane. You know? And not I mean, only that, like, I, did you see the story by J.J. Watt where J.J. Watt said literally one time Rivers called out their blitz and he goes yeah. hey you're lined up in the wrong spot for this like literally he was like telling the guy i, I know those. i already know what's coming I like those. and so this is what people don't understand like and i'm not saying i'm like some advanced football like in, oh insight, neither one of us are that, but sure. I, I i mean i played college football i've sat in hundreds of hours of film i understand a little bit of what yeah. it takes to play the quarterback position and philip rivers is he was brilliant. He was like mentally right. as good as it got. I think he lost uh, some arm strength, talent, like just. He's arm, always his arm been on a team down. that was never quite great. He had a couple yeah. of times when they thought maybe he would Super Bowl bound potentially, but yeah. I I can only I can't even think of what years those, those were, but maybe two or three early two thousands. I mean Tomlinson when he had that record yeah. touchdowns. I mean Anto- oh, early days, Antonio yeah. Gates was. I mean yeah. he literally made Gates all. But, but hammer, even probably. that. I'm I'm <clears throat> I'm trying to remember, like my feeling I had, yeah. and I just kept going. Yeah, it's not them. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be the ones no. in the Super Bowl. And so they made um, the one I run. About Tomlinson. They won, They made the one run to the AFC Championship. That'd be 2006. Lost, uh, 2006 Brady. with Tomlinson. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that. Yeah, was, that was that was a pretty good team with Gates and Tomlinson. Oh yeah, yeah, they had some weapons. I mean. They also had a really I don't know defense. Their defense was it? Do you remember uh, the game where AP set the record against them for oh, rushing? Oh, wow. Like so almost, the defense was pretty yards. terrible. Yeah, okay. was pretty bad. I don't remember that part. Which is unfortunate for Phillip. I mean, obviously, um, I think the Hall of Fame as a quarterback uh, is obviously far more than winning Super Bowls. By the way, uh, Steve. What up, Steve? What up, Steve? Um, this was months ago. We went through it. We looked through uh, the number of quarterbacks in the Hall of Fame. There's not very many. Yeah. I thought there was maybe 30. Yeah. Like, there's like 11. 11, yeah. So I, I, I agree with you. I think he's a Hall of Famer. I think it's gonna, he's going to take the scenic route, route yeah. to it. He's going to get the Veterans Committee or whatever they do. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ah, oh, we got him on the 18th I, ballot. I said that to Steve, too. I, I went up to Steve. Uh, I said that to him too. I was like, uh, "They're like a veterans committee because I do yeah. think I think he deserves to be in there." But it's not I think him and Eli way. Manning are very similar, and I think uh, they're a step. I disagree. I think they're a step below. I um, think Eli Manning is Troy Aikman, and they should stay far away from the Hall of Fame. No, I don't. I don't think Manning. Manning's played big in really, really big in games. Two games. So what? Um, he also threw five picks that year in all four. Early in the season. What do you mean? And, uh, Eli Manning threw five interceptions in a game, like week four or whatever that year. Yeah. Uh, Eli Eli and Troy Aikman blow. Hey, I'm a bit biased, but uh, neither Aikman one of them Aikman was should the be. byproduct of a phenomenal uh, run game. Oh, by the way, defense. yeah, Aikman. Here's Aikman. Um, give me a offensive line where everybody's an all pro. Mm-hmm. Give me a Hall of Fame wide receiver. Give me a Hall of Fame – the maybe maybe rusher. the goat running back, the and I'll throw twenty five hundred yards every year, and I uh, get to the Hall of Fame. Like, get out, get out of here. Well, and that's where the touchdowns, or sorry, the Super Bowl wins with yeah. Aikman skew it a little bit. Whereas I don't think that's the case with Brady. Some of it too is he was the number one pick, so he yep. had hype starting. Then he's on a good team. Then yep. they win Super Bowl. Then so now Brady had to actually start from a nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's where do. so this is where Brady's different than Bradshaw and even Montana. L- think about the the teams that the Steelers won with in the seventies. No. You literally had Hall of Famers at every other position. Right. Franco Harris, uh, 
Webster, Ham, Stallworth. I mean, Lynn Swan. They had like right. they had skill position guys everywhere. Offensive line, defensive like, and Bradshaw was above Benefit average. Area, he was. Yeah. Yeah. And Tell, Joe Montana, na- na- Dwight name, Clark, and Jerry Rice. I can name and... on one in, in in three fingers. I think the the other Hall of Famers on offense that have ever played with Tom Brady. Randy Gronk, Moss. Gronk, Moss, and do I have another one even? Hmm. Not Corey Dillon. No, no, <laughs> no. I don't even think he played with Corey Not, Dillon. I mean, I think n- out none of the other guys. I know he had some defensive Hall of Famers like Ty Law and Brewski probably. I yeah, don't know, defense I think like was Vrabel. probably where he could get some stuff. Yeah, they had some stuff for – the Patriots had a better defense. But like, but, like, he made it happen, and I think that's half the fun, like, with Scotty Mitchell. Like, he's like, I can do this. This right, is how right, I do I mean, right. I, And here's the thing. Some quarterbacks will force a ball to Devontae Adams. Yeah. And I'm not saying Rodgers did this yesterday. When they have a wide open – Scotty Mitchell and Brady yeah. doesn't care. Yeah. He doesn't. He first of all, he doesn't like. I don't think he's pressure because he's the goat to like. Hey, I need to get you X amount of touches. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get with the defense. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say you this know. about uh, Aaron Rodgers, and it pains me to say this, um, but his almost his entire career, like they haven't given him anything on offense to play with, right? And that really does add to the, sure. the uh, value the that Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Well, the frustration, frustration for on, his part, on his part. But, like, he is better than his numbers, yep. which is crazy because his numbers are good. They're really good. Because there's really nothing. I mean, he's playing with – the reason why when somebody leaves the team, they kind of suck. Yeah. Or they're kind of average. Yeah. And you're like, well, how'd that happen? Well, well let me, let me ask happen. you, do you think Rodgers is back with them next year? I hope so from a card standpoint. Because mm-hmm. once the guy leaves – Brady might be the exception – where it's kind of like the, I'm going to leave and then I'm going to win a Super Bowl with a new team. That's how awesome I am. I think yeah. it's a little different than if Aaron Rodgers goes to, like, the Bears and yeah. then they go 11-5 and five and lose them the but it, but if But if he goes game. to the San Francisco 49ers and turns them around, I mean, right? Yeah. Isn't that the talk? Rodgers is from Northern California. Oh, yeah, I mean, fair I, enough, I mean yeah. I don't think they love Jimmy Yeah, he went to uh, – UCLA. Or U, Cal. Uh, Cal. Yeah. yeah. University of California. Yeah. Huh. So I mean that's interesting to watch. I mean, the the card market has obviously responded yeah. drastically. Yeah, I in told, favor I, of I woke up Tom to Brady. some Brady than uh, some Mahomes though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean it's going to be an exciting time. I mean, you, it for us in our business in a selfish way, the only two current players I'm personally investing any money in are the two quarterbacks in the Super Bowl. Well, I'll put it this way: <laughs> like, it's the only reason the the Packer Buccaneer game. The only reason why I was gonna win no matter what, because I want I was rooting for the Bucks and yep. I had money on them, and um, I I do want to see the craziness that will be Tom Brady in the National Card Show this summer. Yeah, it's gonna be wild if he wins the Super Bowl. Even I if he doesn't, that. I think it's gonna be nuts. Still, I I don't think it matters at this point. But right? here the here's the here's the selfishness. If the Packers would have won, mm-hmm. I got a lot of Packer fans coming to my shop. Yeah, and cards are gonna be amazing in the yep. store. So there's some like. Even if the Packers win, I'm still going to win from a card selling standpoint. And like my, my brother texted, uh, which is funny because my mom is actually from uh, Wisconsin. She's a Packer fan. Oh, yuck. Was that, you know, at least the bars are open <laughs> after that loss because they're, 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 <laughs> they they're in Wisconsin. <laughs> this is my favorite. That's that's the meme right there. Oh, yeah. So Clint's showing me a meme where uh, Tom Brady is holding baby Rogers. <laughs> It's hilarious. It says, What's the caption on it? It says, Daddy's going to come visit you at Lambo. <laughs> Daddy's going to come visit you. <laughs> um, all right. So I, we did have a question. So let's get to the question. Um, Nicholas V A A G E. Vaj? Oh, uh, N- Vagi. Vagi? Yep. He comes into the shop. Oh, hey. We talk about local Nick. guy. Awesome. Yeah, Nick. Nick Vaggie. He says, um, What's up, Nick? he's asking how to handle eBay. This is, this is how I wrote it, not an yeah. exact quote. Um, he made a sale. He's worried about somebody returning a card they bought because the price came down. How to handle that? Um, the simple answer is uh, you, you can't do anything about it. Yep. eBay is going to make their rulings. Um, the buyer can literally say whatever they want. They're going to yep. get the return. Um, so it's actually kind of nice because you can just 
pull out of your head. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. You can't affect it. You yeah. can't you can't impact it, so why worry about it's, it? It's par for the course, as they say, Absolutely. in the sense that selling on eBay, I have to take returns. Mm-hmm. And I and and Even the, if you don't yeah. take returns, you have yeah. to take returns. You have to take them. And so the way you – what you're trying to do, I think, as a whole, if you talk about eBay in general, you're trying to build enough customer trust – and relationship where they value your so your feedback, pe- what people believe about you right. enough to hopefully buy ungraded cards yeah. at your description. But let's, and, let's go back yet, to what he's worried about. He's just yeah. worried about, I saw a card for $100. Uh, the guy gets hurt. Let's say or he, Otani, hurt, or he right? doesn't, Or he doesn't go to the Super Bowl, yep. and then now he's worth half as much and he gets the return. Because then the person's using them like you know Home Depot, yep. and that's just simply you don't have any control the, over it. Stop worrying if, about if it. If you want to use eBay, there's no way to avoid it, right? Correct. And now the 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 upside, like I'm in a situation right now. I text you a photo. We bought a Jordan rookie PSA seven last week on Thursday. I listed it the next day, and I listed it at fifteen thousand. It sold for twelve. The guy hasn't paid yet. It's been three or four days. And to be honest, I, I hope he doesn't because it's up another right. $3,000. Right, right. So right now, like, part of the benefit is, like, here's what I would say to Nick. Take the return, and the reality is some of those are going to bounce back, like your Leonard Fournette guy. Correct. Where that card actually appreciates yeah, in the process triple after in your favor. Yeah. Right. So it might not be till the next season, but the reality is a lot of times them returning it, they missed an opportunity right. in this market, at least. Well, I'll tell you something. It's weird how we talk about things and things just naturally go. It's like yeah. we're literally having a conversation. Yeah. Uh, I want you to look to your right on my bottom shelf. Yes. What do I have up there uh, that you recognize? N- no Pokemon. Yeah, but bottom shelf basketball. Encased. I have enca- that's my encased box that I sold December 23rd. What? You bought it back from your guy. Yeah, I bought it back for my eBay uh, purchase there. Oh, that was the eBay one. No, I sold it on eBay. So you told me about what was the product? No, told no. Me the one and one. Any one. Told yeah. me about the one and one. I sold yep. that, and I'm like, good. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna sell that in case too. Yep. Mailman comes, brings me a box. I'm like, I had, I did have a return out, so I'm like, oh, I must be a return. I open it up, in case is sitting there. I'm like, now I had, I had a, a price tag on it, and so I peeled the price tag and I put a new price tag, so mm-hmm. it's like a blank um, sticker on there. Mm-hmm. That's my box. Like, yep. nobody else did that in that exact spot. Yeah. Uh, so I had to return the sender, um, customer, something, something. I sold it for $525. Mm-hmm. They're $900 now. Nice. By the way, I have no message saying, hey, where's my box? There's awesome. no message saying, your box is going back. You better give me my money. Nothing. Radio silence. I sent a message. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm baffled. I call eBay. I'm like, can I get screwed here? Like, is this one of those things where, right? You know, you bought it with a stolen credit card, and then I make a refund. He's like, well, no, nah, it's just gonna go back on the credit card that you use. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Um, so I sent a message. And they're like, oh yeah, I was too busy to pick it up. Can you resend it? Uh, no, I'm uh, not gonna resend it to you. No. Uh, you should I, sign for I, it. I will resend it at a higher price I'll point. I'll sell it to you for nine hundred dollars now. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. so. But yeah, that's the uh, situation where they didn't have time to go pick it up, I guess. Yeah. And now and it's you up have three hundred and seventy-five dollars more than it was. And when you I have a it. percentage of people that are going to, you know, the big one a few years ago was when the Otani craze happened, yep. and then he hurt then he his got arm. Hurt. All these returns got processed. And we saw right? this. I mean, I'm sure Evan was on the Facebook group. Like that's all you saw for two weeks. Yeah. Big, big dollar cards getting returned. And then people, a lot of people, like, they live in a world where they sell a card and they immediately spend that money. Yep. There's no money to, and then all of a sudden their PayPal account blowing up and gets locked up. Then PayPal says, oh, you're one of those people. We're not going to let you use PayPal anymore. Wow. So understand that if you're one of the people that do this stuff, we don't like you. Because you're really screwing with people. Like, I can take a return. How do you really feel? I can take a return. I have a, I have a capital yep. fund where it's like, you know, part of the cost of doing business. But most yep. card sellers are just people. Yeah. Just dudes, right? Yep. And they sell a card for $1,000. They sell it. They go to their wife. They're like, hey, we can buy that so-and-so now. Yep. And and they and then you go, oh, the market's turned. I'm just going to return it. That, yep. That's crap. 
Yeah, no. Stop doing that. Basically, what you're doing is you're minimizing your take, losses. You're trying to take advantage of them to to, to absorb your risk. Correct. Whatever, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be curious to see if there's a way if e- eBay institutes any sort of policy that. Well, they it. did actually, and I didn't print it out. Did you see this, Evan? Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't. Right. So they made it where you don't have to take remorse returns anymore. Hmm. Um, I didn't investigate it too much because it was all about being top rated. I have no interest in being top rated. Yep. Um, they require uh, one day shipping. Yeah. Now, I ship same day, yep. but the way they calculate one day is ridiculous. Now, the advantage, you know, is you save 1%. Yeah. They, well, yep. t- yeah. You save 10%, lo- but 1%. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. You save a percentage off a, of yeah, your Yeah, one point yes. off of your 10%. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So every, yeah. And, and so I'm like, well, the way they do that, it's like I was getting late ships, and I'm like, dude, they bought it at 9 o'clock on Friday, but it has to be out Monday morning. That's not one day. One day is Tuesday morning. Monday right. is the day. Yep. I mean. Because it's already past the end of the day Friday. Right. right. And so, and I got in an argument with him. I'm like, yeah, I, don't, I don't care about this 1%. And, right. and so I'd rather, so I do two-day handling, but I ship the same day. I mean, my feedback's all like lightning fast, lightning fast. Awesome. Right. I was supposed to get it Friday. I got it Monday. I'm like, damn right you got it Monday. Yeah. I'm yeah. awesome at this, you know. Uh, Speaking of seller's remorse, You're buyer's darn remorse. Right. You got it Monday. Uh, <laughs> we we had an interesting story, and this transitions to a story I wanted to tell quick. Is uh, a, a customer of ours was getting ready to grade a bunch of cards. He had some cards he wanted to sell, okay. and he had a. I think I told you about this, maybe not. A 1997 Fleer Ultra, David Wesley, basketball player. No. He had the one of one masterpiece. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, yeah, it's yeah, the you purple. So. Um, so I wanted to buy it from him. And I didn't I, remember. And honestly, I bought it on a whim with really not a lot of comps as far as like wow. what I could find as comparable players out of that set or any other David Wesley's. Common. So this I mean, is maybe where, a little this, better. This than is where it gets. This is where it gets fun. So I, I told Mike, this is where auctions serve. Uh, I think you as a seller, when you have an item that is rare enough that yeah. comes up for sale, so few times like a one-on-one it, it's not always a one-on-one was it could be it could be a, a low pop celtic on the card he was a hornet on the card hornet that kind of hurts it he it, was a celtic though it one hurts one. it but the reality is there's guys you have mul- you have a bunch of collectors who are collecting that set in one-on-one right there's guys who are collecting that obviously team. him that team and one of ones in general from the yeah, 90s. Right. Like authentic masterpieces. Well, uh, are, yeah, you know, they're, they're masterpieces. It's a collector. masterpiece. Like, yeah. the, like this is prior to like Panini putting eight one of ones in a proc. Like you literally, right. one it was one, one of each in the entire and show, no, right? And no printing plate. Too. And so, so I told Mike, I'm like, Let, let's roll this thing on auction, right? So I bought it with a few other cards for 250 okay. bucks. I rolled it on auction. It sat with 18 or 20 watchers all week. And like, it was no finish, and it was finishing last night. There no was it was action. seventy two dollars or something. Okay, and I'm like, oh man, this might be bad. And then, <laughs> by, by the end of the day, Sunday, it's like two hundred. I'm like, okay, at least we break. I mean, right. we're gonna make a little bit of money, right? Within the last minute, a bunch of guys were watching it. Well, I didn't see it. There's like eleven it, snipers. There's eleven snipers. <laughs> it goes from two hundred, and then all of a sudden, a bunch of people put in bids, and it closes. Guess what? It closed at yeah. Uh, it, was at two, it was at two hundred dollars with like thirty seconds. Four twenty five. One thousand four hundred and thirteen dollars. What? For a one on one David David Wesley. Wesley. And guess who bought it? Who? Nat Turner. Oh, the guy who's wow. buying PSA. So I shipped it to him, and I put in one of our podcast yes, reminders. Yes. I was like, this could be the moment. You should have wrote a note like, Here we look, go. homie, you got to help me out. <laughs> help, hook, <laughs> hook it up, brother. Oh, man. And we so, need Nat Turner to be like, I found this podcast. It was awesome. <laughs> so, like, literally, Nat Turner, uh, I and actually, what up, Nat? When, when I put it out there, I didn't put it out thinking he was going to buy That's it. awesome. But I knew he had the Jordan uh, one-on-one out of that set, the masterpiece, because he showed it on one yeah, of his videos. Yeah, but what does the David Wesley have to do with the Jordan, though? The, he's going after the whole set. He's doing the he's ultra. Doing the whole, one of he's one trying to have the most. Set. There's no way he can complete that. Set. No, but I mean, but uh, you could have like forty five percent. You could make it a goal to get them all right. Yeah, so it's funny actually. Uh, uh, the guy who sold it to us was one of the watchers That's on awesome. the deal, and he goes, he called me today. He's like, "Yeah, so you taught me you a lesson." Gotta go back, he taught, he, He's like, "You taught me a lesson." I said, "You know what though?" And this, uh, this is a question I have for you. You could have sold it, for seventy bucks. Let too, me ask you know? this. This is the question I have for you. Do you think if he as a Brand new seller with twenty five feedback auctions that card. How, how? What's the price difference versus us selling, I, it, or selling it? Or um, 
I don't think it's as big as you think it would be. 10%, 20%? Yeah, because they've, they've – so Titling it properly. Here's, well, I mean, but here's the problem. No. Here's the problem with – a lot of people think, like, oh, you're going to get way less money. I think you will get less money. Um, because there you do – we, me and you get a premium because you look at my feedback. For sure. I Right now I got six negatives, I think. Yeah. Four are from one guy. Wow. Right? Thank you. And that guy was just – Angry. He was doing a partial refund scam, and I literally spun attempted par- partial re- re- refund scam. Yep. One was something that was probably legitimate, right? But I don't know. They never contacted me. They, um, I sold a program, and they said a page was missing. Completely okay. possible. I don't look at yeah. every page in a program, right? Um, but I never got contacted, so I said I wasn't contacted, and I put a question mark. The other one was uh, like a. Uh, something that didn't go out and I didn't contact him. Yep. Completely true. And well, I wrote, 100% my fault, buyer's correct, yep. whatever. So the one thing is I, I actually like it. admitting yes. that if I did something wrong, I like admitting it because I think when people look at your negative feedback and if every response is, this is a horrible person, you disgusting yeah. thief, you know, whatever, it's like, oh, I don't really like this seller. The guy's like not – Cool. Yeah. Versus the but one guy who's like, clearly nah, angry. this was my fault. Totally. So I, I got attempted to, like to that reconcile and a negative it. like that, right? Yep. Where I'm like, this is my fault. I dropped the ball. I apologize. Uh, and you can't well. let that get to you. You can't let it affect you. We just got a negative feedback on our Google deal, and the guy was like, way too high price. And I responded to him, and I oh, said, well, you know, as I mean, far as whether it's boxes and stuff, I'm like, we're always at blowout or below. Right. Like, I understand the market's really high priced. Yeah. Now, is that my fault? Not necessarily. Like, I, and I told him, I like I think what you did in disclosing this, this is a a lesson, uh, you know, for in businesses. Whenever you have the opportunity to be as transparent as you can, it serves the purpose because right. people just go, oh, oh, he made a mistake, and there's right, right, there's right. more of, versus like you creating well, I some don't, elaborate. I actually defense, kind of like know. having one negative. I'm like totally my fault. No, yeah. so anyways, we got a little off track. So yeah. anyways. So you look at my feedback and you're yeah. saying laser fast, laser fast, fast. You know, do really we ever get off really... on track? I mean, our, so what? our conversations are they on track? Is that they're never the, on track? Oh, on track. <laughs> Just by the way, the is point there of a the track? Podcast, I was gonna say, is there a track? The to point this? of the yeah. podcast yeah. is that Unscripted. we do literally what we would do in our phone call. Yeah, and we talk about fourteen thousand topics in We're an a hour. Bunch of and, stories. You know. So, anyway, back to what yeah. you were saying. Does he get less? Probably a little less, but. The way auctions work, too, is you only need two to get that top end price. Right. So the only people on that card he's scaring away are probably the mid range bids. Sure. I bet you it it probably gets the same amount, even yeah. uh, potentially. Which, by the way, I made this comment to someone not too long ago. I said, You want to have a card that Nat Turner wants? Oh, yeah. Because you're going to. He's just going to get it. Like, yeah, no doubt. I have no idea what his max bid would have been, but I basically, he went above. The next guy and just no. Said, I like know, I like his... it when I sell stuff to people who are interesting, even if they're not. No, like Nat Turner's not really famous. He's no. famous in the hobby, in, in the sports collecting. But um, but like I sell a lot of print ads, uh, Nike print ads to mm-hmm. like people who own like weird shops on in New York City. Like what's nice. the main what's the main street in New York City? Um, uh, well, the rich Times people Square? Are, like Times Square and stuff. Yeah, or, or whatever it is. Uh, Wall Street. Yeah. I can't. I, I gotta think of an old Steinfeld. I'm from Minnesota. I don't know crap about New York City, but like I'll yeah. I'll sell. I'll see an address and I'll be like, what well, high on stuff where they buy yeah. a lot of it. And I'm like, I'm gonna Google this. <laughs> I Google. I Google nice. my uh, buyers all the time. My like, that person looks interesting. I've I've, yeah. I've sold a lot of stuff to um different. I've sold to the um, the curator of the Nike Museum or the Nike Archives. Wow. I've sold it to the curator of the Reebok Archives. And the curator of the Adidas archives. Now, the are these the pu- are these the public? Are these public? So they googled them, and that was museums? their LinkedIn came in. Or is this just their own archives? That just are their archives for the company. So they're just making then, sure I they think have it, them. Puma was the one that the the non of the. So I sold to all three of the big three shoe wow. companies, and then Puma was the fourth one. Puma or somebody else, but. I, I'll, I'll Google, I'm like, why are you buying 47 print ads? And then I'll, I'll, the LinkedIn will come up. Oh, they're, they're the, I don't know what you call the, I think it's called curators. Yeah. So for the archives, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. My stuff's that in cool. the archives. That's for cool. Sure. I'm like, why didn't you keep it. your own copy, you weirdo? Yeah, <laughs> you, you think buy you them should from be there. Exactly. No, but they, they probably don't know what magazine they're in. Right. 
They're probably like, I don't know. Like, we got a, we got the original, the proof, but we don't have the actual one. Right. And then they're like, well, I know it's probably within these 14 magazines. Well, they're not going to buy all 14 magazines. It's going to buy it for me. Right. So. I love it. Well, and to the point on auctions, you know, we, we've talked a lot about eBay. Um, do you do buy it now as our auctions? You know? Right. And I think there's rare times where I like auctions, and this mm-hmm. is one of them because – it is a one-on-one. Like, I think some people get scared of it. Like, oh, well, I said, I'm going to set a reserve. It's like, no, don't set a reserve. That actually no, scares away the reserve. initial bidders because what they think you're doing is you're setting a reserve that's at the fair market price. Right. So there's no advantage to possibly getting it cheaper. Well, what happens is literally people see a reserve and they just don't bid. They just don't bid. And then so you yeah. take out a big chunk of people. Who are driving the action. Who can yeah. drive the action. Yes. And so reserves are only good for, like, let's say I'm selling a car. Yep. And I have a twelve thousand dollar note on it. Yeah. And I need twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. That's the only time a reserve is going right. to happen. Yep. But the whole benefit to an auction is to actually get as many people involved. Right. And someone might, and if you've ever watched a live action, a good auctioneer, one of the things they're doing is driving action where people, they're trying to convince people yeah. a lot of times to continue to bid when maybe. How about they you, wouldn't. ma'am, and with the purse? You know. Right. And, exactly. You know, it's actually targeting people in the audience uh, yep. like why aren't you bidding like one more yeah. like or, or like you, you can see when someone's like i'm done and then they continue to like uh, yeah. give them more opportunity yeah. to like okay yep I'm are, 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 are you back in again yeah, there you know right, right, <laughs> after right. like four other people going. which is a super unique dynamic of sales because like auctioning is such a it's 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 older and antiquated and yet the fact we still have it active like in right. settings where like so for me, it was the storage units. Like they would auction them, right. and one of the reasons they had to do that, and this is back to the card point, yeah. they auctioned them so that they couldn't manipulate the price and sell something no. too cheap. Do you know that? No. Yes. Listen to the story. No. Here's why. Here's why. If state law requires it, but here's why state law requires yeah. it. Because here's how it works. So let's say public storage. I have a storage unit, and I owe five hundred dollars on it. Yeah. And I have ten thousand dollars worth of stuff. And they want their unit back because I'm not paying it. Right, right, right. And they just want that stuff out of there so they can collect rent. And they can and they, again, right? they can't turn it to me and go, here, give me 100 bucks for it. Right, right. They want the fair market to determine. And then I don't know if you knew this, but let's say that auction, let's say they have $10,000 of the stuff, and let's say the auction goes for 1000 Yeah. The first 500 that I owed goes to public storage. Okay. The rest gets mailed to me as a check. It does not, really? Yes, it does. Oh, yes. I didn't know that. So if, you, if your stuff gets auctioned, the initial amount that pays off your debt goes to public storage yeah. makes nothing. They they want their I space. I had no back. idea. Yeah, I know. I, a lot of people don't realize that. So oh, like, I didn't know that at so all. So if I had a Harley and it went for thirty thousand, public right, storage right. doesn't pocket that. They get their I always back rent, that. and then they mail. And so the reason the auction auctions are the truest determinant of yeah. value. Well, it's the truest determinant of value in that exact moment. Correct. And we had talked about this at length, which is the regarding- only time. The market, the market is always current. The true. Market, well, it right? well it is. I mean, but like stock. I mean, we know only, we know full well that yeah. I can price something and then within six months get my price. But if I auction sure. it, I would get less, right? Yep. But, well, partly that is because maybe the supply on that item is super high. Fair right? enough. Yep, yep. But but uh, what the auction does is it gives you a mechanism at which everybody has a chance to bid. Yes. And the buyer and the seller, or the seller cannot dispute that that was market value. Correct. Because everybody had the ability to participate yep. in the auction. And if it was super undervalued, someone else would have taken advantage of that. Because Correct. that's the fair market, right? Because yeah, as cap- a million dollars yeah. and fifth dollar, someone's going to be like, uh, two? Uh, yeah. <laughs> two? Uh, as a capitalist, I see an opportunity there. <laughs> and the next guy is going to be like, Two dollars and one penny. That would be the Dwight. Shirt. I mean, my dad. Literally, I saw my dad. <laughs> I saw that light go on once. We were at an auction, and they were auctioning a. Was it a uh, tiger or a like, like some a exotic animal? Tiger, tiger, a, like a uh, uh, not a, alive, oh, okay. but a, but a, the cape of one, and they had the paperwork from Africa. It was killed on a hunt, and there oh, was, the legal. It tiger, was legally yeah. transported. And they had all the documentation, so okay. you could actually sell it. And somebody was, they were, t- everyone was talking prior to this auction. And they're like, this thing is worth. Ten to thirty thousand on the open market right. because it had the paperwork to like be bought by someone. But how many people want to buy a tiger? But you know what? That thing did not go for five hundred dollars because wow. it went for like 
three thousand because people were like, "Well, you know what? If there's seven thousand dollars to be yeah, made yeah, here, yeah. I'll go figure it out." Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's the uh, beauty of uh, auction, right? Well, I, 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 I've done that a few times, probably yeah. lower stakes than a tiger. Yeah. But where I'm like, eh, I'll figure out how to sell this because yeah, it's so cheap. And that's you know that's the beauty of an auction is it's it's liquidity. It's, right. It's you, 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 the seller cannot dispute. Usually, and I'm kind of referring to a adversarial situation where sure. um, there's uh, maybe a number of owners and they can't determine somebody's trying to buy out somebody yeah. else. Well, the only way you can determine value for sure is that auction because yep. even especially if the the partners or the multiple owners can bid on the auction, right? Then you're really playing a game of chicken because then it's like. Well, obviously, I want to acquire it for as low as I can, but I don't want the other guy to have. It's kind of like it's kind of like the movie Uncut Gems, right? He just keeps he he yeah. does the opposite. Like you just watch it, and you're like, why is he continue to bid this? He finally watch that and movie, then he, and then he gets right. stuck with it. Yeah, yeah what a That's Shakespearean a, tragedy. Or yeah, it stuff. was. Uh, I I had a feeling the ending was going to happen. Did you? you yeah, I had a feeling. Wrong. I was looking at it because it's it's the it's not the first time I saw that, but it was yep. the second time I saw that, and I yeah. go. I get the same feeling I got the first time I thought that. I don't want to say what happened. Just yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. But definitely watch Uncut Gems, Classic. Adam Sandler movie on uh, Netflix. And right and again. Adam Sandler in a in a role I've never seen him in, and Although, Kevin Garnett too. I, I will do it. Kevin Garnett was in there. My favorite part. This is not a spoiler because uh, yeah. my favorite part, and uh, you've been here, and I know yeah. I've been here, is uh, Kevin Garnett keeps leaning on his glass display cases, and Sandler keeps going. KG, get off my cases. You know, no elbows on it. And I've had customers on, like, you got to stop leaning on my case like that because they're being really, like, heavy with it. Yeah. Like, you can, I lean on my case a little you bit, just, but, you know, yeah. when you got a six, eight power forward leaning on it's like, stop leaning on You're my like, case. Please don't put your elbows through this glass <laughs> right now. Um, okay. Yeah. I got a another thing that came up. Uh, Zach had asked me this, and I don't know the answer, and I assume you do. It's not a pontificating okay. question but uh grading yeah for a horizontal card mm-hmm. okay and let's say the uh back is not vertical yep. the back is horizontal as well sure which side does the label go on what side is the top of the card what side is the bottom of the card to uh the grader or is there no standard no standard that i've seen there's no think. standard I, um I, oh, no, I should well, say, there, there's a way they determine the standard, and I don't think it's does it change universal. By I think it changes by set. Oh, okay. So, there's a, yeah. so within a set, it'll always be the same way, so far as you know. I think I've – interesting story that you bring this up. I was just showing Evan a card in here okay. that just came back from PSA where Jordan is on the back of the card. Yeah. And it's a two-player. Yeah. I've seen them graded with Jordan showing. That is the Griffey I, I had. And, and I submitted it to be – Jordan showing, and they graded it in the reverse way. And I've seen them grade the other way. No, I, so I they made a mistake. That was that finest refractor with Griffey on the front and A Rod on the back that yep. I got back. That's the one card I kept from that order. Yep. And Griffey is the back of the card. Right. And they put him in the front of the card, and that was one of the reasons why that was the card I kept. There's a Jordan card, which we may talk about later, that um, is one of my favorites. That he's it's a player on each. It's called. Top crop. Oh and yeah, it's Gary top Payton crop. and it's and Jordan and Jordan is on the back of the card, but you always get it graded a with tragedy. him flipped over. You know, it's, it's a weird deal. Like, I love Gary Payton, but that's yeah, tragedy, yeah, it's, right? it's interesting. You know. Well, let's let's move right into that then. So yeah. uh, Zach again, uh, a couple podcasts ago, right before we started taping, he, he was, him and Clint were talking, and me and Evan were setting up, and and he goes, uh, "What's the best Jordan under a hundred dollars?" I was like, "Oh, that's a good question, yeah. right?" And so I changed the rules. Because okay. Jordan under 100 is kind of rough nowadays. Like, a year ago, it would have worked. Yeah. So I said, let's up it to 200 And so uh, Clint, myself, and Steve. What can up, I, Steve? Can I act like we're, like, five years ago when you could actually buy No, no. So, okay. so uh, Clint was like, oh, the card for $500. I, 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 like, you now, can't talk about that well, card. a couple of these cards in my mind, I... I haven't looked them up in the last six months, and I'm no, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. So I, uh, do you want me to go first, yeah, and then go, you go, and yeah. then I'll talk about what, Steve. Steve only has three cards. Why don't we do? Why don't we just alternate? You go do one, I'll do one. All right, fair enough. And then we'll do Steve last. Yeah. He only has yep. three. Yep. All right, so my first one is probably one of my favorite cards of all time, 1993-94 hoop face to face. Yes. With Harold Baby Jordan on the yes. back, both sides are foil. Yes. Impossible to grade. Yep. 
PSA nines are fifty to eighty bucks. Wow, it's a very common card. I think Love if you buy card. a box, you yeah. might get. Did you actually pull that card? Do you remember? Yeah, I pulled like two or three of them, and I had no budget in mm-hmm. in nineteen ninety five, right? Mm-hmm. And so I actually have thirty or forty of them. Mm-hmm. I've been picking them up raw for like four bucks nice. to eight bucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean a PSA nine at fifty dollars for a card that's really, really hard to grade too. So yeah. a nine is a very good, uh, uh, super good grade, very good grade on that. Card. On that, the con- that, the, the edge is always ripped out. That, yeah, you know? absolutely. So that's uh, that's one for me. What do you got? Uh, I'm going with a card that I'm I'm not gonna I can look up the value, but ninety three same same year. Did you say ninety three ultra? Three ninety four. Ninety three ninety four ultra. The toughest pull in that box was i believe this the scoring kings yeah so the scoring kings jordan super foil sensitive if you're familiar with the picture it's Is like light under it's, 200 it's got lightning coming down i think raw they're probably close to two i mean part they of it were is a hundred dollars for like hey, but here's the thing about that card Condition sensitive is so important. Like you could probably get a beat up raw one for oh, less enough. than that, like, and you could get a ninety dollars. I, I I would guess a PSA ten is over ten thousand. I would argue you know. that that might be one of his most popular inserts yeah. ever made. Yep. And having one in five is not a bad thing. Not at all. And it's a great photo. It's also the beginning of like inserts starting. Yeah, like that's really the be- good. Inserts. Like where they actually started having like the total D is another yeah, one. I, one yeah, a box, yeah. one every three boxes, yep. and then multiple sets. Not the not the super obscure inserts that are super expensive. Now, I'll be but, very uh, clear about my list going on. Is mm-hmm. I wasn't really looking at it from an investment standpoint. I was looking at it as cards that you probably don't even know exist if you were not collecting in the 90s. Sure. It's just cards that when I saw them as a kid, and I would have been a teenager by this time, I was like, oh, I love that card. I love the art. I love the way it is. I mean, the first one I had is like Baby Jordan's on the back. It's all foil. It's double-sided. It's a really common card. I mean, it's not it's not a, this is not a, this is not something, um, um, uh, what's his face is going to buy? Nat Turner. Nat Turner is going to buy Right. Uh, I'm sorry, Nat. I didn't mean to refer to you as what's his face. Uh, please subscribe to our podcast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, next one I got is, again, another favorite of mine. A very inexpensive card. I think you can get it for like three or four bucks. Wow. Mm-hmm. 91-92 Fleer Pro Vision. This mm. is the white border. Yes, where he's flying. Uh, like Fanimation. Yes, he's Fanimation. flying. He's in outer space. Yes. Um, I think it's only like six cards set. And, and PS- out of 10s were like 40 back in the day. I don't well, know PSA 10s are still 140 bucks. They're wow. still under 200 bucks. PSA 9s are 40 bucks. Wow. I sent one off. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 9, but I don't care. I love the card. That is my second entry. What do you got? Uh, I actually have the card in front of me right now. Uh-oh. Uh, this one I just got back from up PSA. The, uh, and I, wanna, I, th- I think I'm going to keep it. 1996 Topps Chrome. Uh, the sticky fingers insert. Oh, so they awesome. did this in tops paper, and then they did it in tops chrome. And so people are familiar with a lot. There's an Enfuego that's like this, mm-hmm. and people always refer to the name on the card. It's actually called Seasons Best. Correct. Do you remember that? They had like, and they had different wording for each player based on like what right. their skill set was, right? So like, this is chrome, and this is obviously Kobe's rookie year. I think these are probably 96, 97. Yeah, I mean, I, these are. Probably well, I think more than they used to be. I think raw this card used to be. No, this is probably a hundred dollar raw card. Yeah, and so is so is the Enfuego. Now a nine's probably closer to two. But so yeah, I, I think I got to jump to Steve's list. What up, Steve? Steve. Um, two of Steve's cards are the Enfuego and the Sticky Fingers. <sighs> Steve, you know cards. So here's the thing. That's I awesome. I got something to talk about that. Yeah. The season's best. Season's best. Insert. Yes. Are the greatest looking inserts in they the make 90s. Sense, yes. They are cheap. Yes. Cheap, cheap. The tops chrome and the Great paper. Design. Now they have refractors on some of them too. So now you have I the options. Yeah. The tops, uh, sticky fingers. The top sticky fingers has sort of a prism yeah. look to it. Yeah. Where the chrome is sort of doesn't have it, that effect. It doesn't have so it. That's yep. Sort of a different effect. Because um, the Enfuego has that too. It's like the prism PRISM. It's like, like the, a Dan yeah. Marino season's best. And I can't remember the name of it. But yeah. it's just a beautiful card, and I go to list that's four bucks. I know it's just like nothing. So basically, if you're looking for beautiful cards mm-hmm. in high grade to yes. buy of Hall of Famers, mm-hmm. just type in Seasons Best PSA ten, and then just just take a look at what you can buy. Some of the nicest looking sets ever made. In for cards. sure. 
Um, I so he stole two of Steve's. Sorry, Steve. So, although, or so uh, I wrote down um, the top side, and Fuego is one twenty five and PSA eight, mm-hmm. and they're sixty raw sticky fingers tops, one twenty five PSA eight and ninety raw. So, yeah. Uh, still under two hundred dollars. Uh, sure. My third one, yeah, um, is a base card. Nice. Uh, ninety-two, ninety-three, Stadium Club number one. Mm. This is the base card where Jordan is like pushing Patrick Ewing as he's dunking on him. It's just the most disrespectful photo I've ever seen, ever seen on a card. I love it. And by the way, Patrick Ewing has probably four or five cards where the opponent is just beating a snot out of him on the card. Like, <laughs> like somebody at Tops did not like Patrick Ewing. They would always go, oh, is Ewing getting dunked on or getting getting punked? Oh, yeah, we'll use that one we first. Better remind, we better remind him. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is, but but that, that card is like a dollar card for decades. Like yeah. Two decades. And in the last six months, people are like, wow, that's a great card. Right. Um, high grade uh, PSA 9 is 60 bucks. Nice. I don't have what the 10s are. They're over 200 Nice. Uh, mine, right along that line, as far as a base card, the next one on my list would be the 1993 Finest, Jordan. Okay. So it's that green yeah. and yellow kind of multicolor first looking year first year Finest. First year. And it so was, I assume we're talking raw now. We're talking raw. I think raw, they're 100. Okay. They're like, uh, actually, they're. I think you can get them for 60 to 120. Okay. And then now you start going into nines, you're probably right at about two, and then tens are six hundred. Yeah, so definitely a card to pick up raw. And and really sure. the card, like, w- was there a chrome card of Jordan before that? I don't think no, there would have no, been a chrome. That would have been would have been the first yep, chrome. It would have been the literal first chrome card of yeah, Jordan. Chrome, and there and chromium. there was a refractor version. Obviously, right. we're talking about the base here. Right. Um, it marks the beginning of cards just changing yeah, as a ultra whole. premium. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ultra premium cards and then and just the we're chrome leaving the and, junk wax there. Yep, we're leaving that. And so like actually that ninety two ninety three pivot, like is mm-hmm. where a lot of those cool looking inserts in like ninety six ninety seven I think came as a result of right. finest stepping out. Ninety three, Jerome Bettis was ninety three, right? Yes. So ninety three Flair football, their big thing was one insert per pack. Yes. That was their big selling point. So they started and by the way, as a 15 year old, that yeah. would be a good selling point. I buy yeah. Flair like crazy. Nice. Okay. Uh, next one for me. Uh, Steve will actually like this. What up, Steve? Um, 95. I don't know if you're going to know this. Uh, you'll know this card mm-hmm. um, because you're, you own a card shop, if I remember correctly. Some days. Uh, 95 96 Skybox EXL. Mm. That framed card. Mm-hmm. Um, black bordered. PSA tens are right at two hundred bucks. PSA nines are fifty bucks. Wow. Uh, that one has a natural born that set has a natural born thriller. Yep. Um and so set that's really, really rare. Oh. Super popular. Super But nasty. yeah, um there's a blue border that would be their parallel. Mm-hmm. The blue border was only slightly more rare, but uh we're going past two hundred dollars on ten. Yeah. Uh I didn't see a nine. I bet you could probably get a nine under two hundred. Nice. So um, that is my number four. I'm going with a fun one. I'm going with this is by far the lowest value card. Okay. I like it because I opened packs from this year. This is 93 Fleer, straight up Fleer. Fleer. The insert. This is the, a white border set. The, this is, yep. Okay. This is the sharpshooter in, insert. So Ooh, it, it has in the bottom left. I'll show, I'll show you a picture of it. Okay. In the bottom, it has the. Uh, it yeah, has yeah, the yeah. bullseye, and it has Jordan in shooting form, like close up, and then another one of him in regular yeah, form. Yeah, it's a two. It's and, the you know what that is? That's the glamour shots photo from yep, the nineties. It's where doubling. You would do the close up of their face, but then it'd be kind of like a shadow submerged background. Baseball did those a lot in like yeah. studio and stuff. They'd right, combine right. the duel. And now this card, it's a great like, card. I remember opening and just wanting this card, and then. I, like now, I just looked it up. I couldn't believe. It. Like you can get a raw one for eight dollars. Yeah, they they were eight, not. 10. They were sort of the middle in terms of rarity. They weren't different. The yeah, the pull they rate weren't they hard. But they weren't the easiest. And either. I think there was literally like ten or twelve in the set. So yeah. even if you got one every other pack, you'd almost get one. No, I think that, that seems like it'd be like one in eight, one in ten, one in ten. So and you get two or like three, three boxes. Three boxes. Yeah. Jordan. yeah. yeah. Um, next one and last one for me, uh, 93, 94 Fleer Ultra inside, outside. 
That's mm-hmm. the one with the big basket in the background. Mm-hmm. Flare Ultra has, you know, some of the best inserts ever made. Uh, PSA 9 is 130. Nice. No, a very, um, very common card. Mm-hmm. I bet you got three inside outside per box. May I don't know how big that is. Uh, it's not that big, so you probably get a Jordan every. It might have even been like four per box. So you might got a Jordan every three boxes, every four boxes. Nice. So not a hard card to get, but a really, really nice design card. Really good art. Did you rip those? Yep. Yeah, I yeah. I remember pulling a Jordan nice. inside outside. I probably I I did get the set without the Jordan in that collection I bought. Nice. And so, but yeah, not, not a not a hard to get set, but just a really really attractive card design. Love it. Uh, your last one. My last one is the ninety six ninety seven Bowman's best best shots. Yeah. Okay. It's like the, it's like an acetate multicolor. How do I put it? It's like, do you remember back in the day when like chameleon paint was like the thing? Where like cars that? would like change colors oh, yeah, like yeah, in yeah, the light. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, this gives you that look where like. The card is clear, but it also has, like, multicolors on it. Right. And they had a refractor version, but to be honest, you can't even really tell it's a refractor unless you flip it over and it says it. It's there's really weird. There's a couple like, cards. Um, this is the card. I don't know if you remember that one. There's a couple cards, yeah. Where it's him dunking, and it's, it's not like. not quite clear. It's not. It's, it is, but it isn't. It is, it's made out of, like, a, a plastic. But color. But there's color to it. Which but is, if you look through it in a light, you can definitely see it through the card. And, and this is, so this is. Kobe's uh, rookie year, and there were some amazing like atomic mm-hmm. die, cu- like the best cuts right. card of Jordan. But that's quite a bit more expensive. Whereas this was the lower as far as value I've insert. Had some other players of that that they're all real affordable. Yeah, very cool. I mean this this card you can buy raw between thirty and fifty. Well, we only got one card to talk about with Steve because the one he only gave what up Steve? Um, we, he only gave me three, and then you stole two of them. You stole. Wow, I didn't even look at the list, Steve. Wow. Um, but one of his favorite cards of all time, he said that he was selling these in the 90s for $20 a piece raw, hmm. and they sell for less than that today, which is weird, right? That is weird. Think about that. Right? Uh, 95, 96, by the way, when he uh, sent it to me, he got the wrong year, so that was fun. Uh, Hoops Tops 10. You yes, that card? I love that card. The the it's, it's like really a pink nice kind of card. I have one right in here. It, yeah, it's, it's like red. And it says top ten it, on the side. It's, it's a horizontal a horizontal card. card. Yep. yep. Uh, I looked it up. PSA nines are seventy. Wow. But he was that he card. said that he probably sold twenty of them at twenty a piece at card shows in Mountain View. That card is super because it was a very card. common card. Like right. you can pull that card no problem. Yeah. But it's so nice looking. People were just like, yeah, I'll give you twenty bucks for that card. That's amazing. Yeah, that 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 card um, was one of the uh, that that must have been a very common card to pull, right? Yeah. Because I've have seen a lot of those cards. Now, one thing I will say, even as we're talking about like, <laughs> okay, if you want one raw, you can get it inexpensive. I would guess a ten on that. Yeah, it's is pretty high. Super low pop yep. because the foil and the yeah, there's, there's some gold good foil. and there's a lot of like yeah, and there's a lot of color on the edge too. So it reminds me of the power palette one. That's I like the same power color. Palette. I'll show you a picture. It's the exact yeah. same color. It's like the a, audience will love it. Like it's like love it if you pink. show me a picture. Yeah, I know. I'm sure. <laughs> hey, you, guys, you guys can look all these up. up. You guys can look these up. Yeah, 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 Evan. If you got on the ball and got a picture of all these cards and put them in the video, I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, we'll just see if Evan's uh, worth his stuff or not. Let's go. Um. So, uh, I, I, a continuation of my story. Let me see this card. Yeah. Oh, I've never sniffed that card, though. <laughs> um, actually, before I go into my story, um, I do got one real quick one for you. I talked to a customer about uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, talked about Antoine, Win- uh, Antoine Winfield, and then he brought up Jeremy Chin. And this was uh, Marcus. He's the mm-hmm. uh, right right here. And um, so we're looking at the stats. The stats are uh, pretty um, – Pretty even. It turns out that uh, Chen has a lot more tackles, so I think that would yeah. probably be the edge. Okay. But we were wondering about uh, – so Chen had two uh, touchdowns against the Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Right? Bring that up. Oh. But Winfield got pick sixes. So this is just a real simple one. Sure. What's more important, a pick six or a fumble return for a touchdown? More important? Yeah, what's, what's a bigger deal? They're both. Like the only I mean, thing that separated them I mean, they're both, was one they're pick both six worth the versus same one fumble. They're worth the same, right? Yeah. But a pick six is harder, is it not? 
Somebody else made the fumble. All you did was pick it up and run. Like you didn't do nothing. I'd say this: a lot less <laughs> fumbles are picked up and scored, I think, than interceptions. Right. I mean, so hmm. That's Isn't that a, just an opportunistic stat? A fumble return. I mean, there's skill involved. There's ball awareness. As much like, skill as a pick. As a pick. No, I, I I would say you're you're if you force the fumble and return it, yeah, that's equivalent enough, to the pick six. Cool. You know, versus like someone else forcing yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Which they have that stat. They have the force fumble, the recovered fumble, and then the yeah, you know, touchdown fumble. Yeah. Two. And sometimes you have one guy be able to doing all three. Is yeah, fair enough. Know. All right. Uh, okay, so continuation of the story. I told the story last podcast, I believe it was last podcast, about my second year beam team, Shaquille O'Neal. Yes, great right? card. Pop, pop just a few, right? So I'll do it really quick. Uh, had it for 1000 15% off, 850 I don't want to sell it for 850 Offer comes in for 625 I look up what the rookie's selling for. Mm-hmm. The rookie had almost doubled in price. I declined the 625 I put 2000 on it. That same buyer puts in an offer for eight fifty, which is what he could have bought it for. I decline it. He puts an offer for a thousand, um, which he could have, which I originally had it up for sixty seven days. I decline that, and I send a message saying I'm not trying to be a jerk. I looked at mm-hmm. what the rookie was going for double. I I can't sell yeah. for a thousand. Right. Um, so he sends me a message yesterday, and he said, uh, very polite message, very polite message, yeah. and he said. Uh, um, I, I think you should give me a deal on this card, especially since uh, I could have bought it for eight fifty, which is true, he could have. Um, and then, and I, it would, I, I give it a good home, and you know, so I believe this guy is an actual collector. Um, had he, so this, this is one thing is don't start off with who you jerk, blah blah. If you really want a card, because like then you know for sure he's not gonna sell it to you, right? And you probably get blocked. Um, so very, very polite. And and then I just kind of reiterated my response. I was like, "Hey, yeah, I just again, I I'm not trying to be like, you know, yeah, all John about it. I'm, I like literally, I didn't know it had moved that much, so I, I you know, obviously I gotta go with the market. Uh, he sends me an offer for fifteen fifty today, wow, which I want to take. Okay, but as you can imagine, him starting off with, "Hey, mate, he's in Australia." Okay. Now, Global Shipping Program will protect me. Correct. I only ship through Global. I don't. I, he was a very polite message. Mm-hmm. I would take the 1550. Yep. I'm a little worried he's pissed off at me, but I don't know what he can do. And there's a Sounds little, like he actually wants it. There's a little something about sending a card to Wisconsin, knowing that if you really, really wanted to, you could drive it over the house and kick his ass, which you're never going to do. But, like, in your head, it makes you feel a little better. I'm not flying to Australia. <laughs> There's no risk for you, though. I mean, right? I There's, mean, there isn't, right? There's no risk. The whole point of eBay. So eBay is the one who literally – I don't. I would be curious to know how many times By the way, if it's happens. over 250 you have to send a signature confirmation, not necessarily yeah. insurance. I'll right. put a little bit of insurance on it. I, Two points. But you think, like you think I should take the offer? Yes. I. Well, I think – so this and, is and why the he, Shaq rookie is going for over ten thousand. Do you think that is a fair price? Yeah. In your opinion? Yeah. But I mean, less than ten to one. Yeah. It's like eight to one. Yeah. It's, well, it's yeah, yeah the seven, seven and a half ish to yeah. one. So seven and a half x is for a second year. I mean, it could the rookie. It, could the you, could you like try crazy. to hold, could you try to hold out for as low as like five x maybe? But to be honest, nineties. Second year, which by the way, on Jordan, I almost threw in the '87 Fleer Jordan's second year. Now that card's yeah. way too expensive. Now. Yeah, that's it's not the one we were talking about. We were they, like, I got to do this. Like they, now. they used to be 200. <laughs> which second year cards, I feel like back then. Here's where I think they're a little bit different. Shaq has dozens of second year cards. Jordan had one. Yeah, fair enough. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does that impact the comparison of value? Like ten to one. Versus- you know what I should do? I should say. I'll tell you what. We'll do this deal. When you get it, if you're happy, you tell me that you listened to my podcast where I talked about this issue. Mm-hmm. I'll give you 50 bucks back. Make them listen to the podcast. Yeah. I, I figured we'll I do that. It. Because I, I just want to be. By the way, how many, car, how many sir, cards sir, have you guys given out? If you're listening to this right now, I really wasn't trying to be a jerk. Yeah. I didn't know. We've <laughs> already given out. 
probably a couple hundred we've mailed out. So I'm curious to see how many. Yeah, people, you know, so, so we have these uh, little cards, and they have a picture of me and Clint yammering, which I think of the net negative. Um, you know, at least on uh, my side being in picture. Like these guys actually a little exist. QR code, and we're putting it in with uh, the card sale. Yeah, so every time we ship on eBay, we send those out, and I mean that's a way for us to Hopefully reach some we'll of our some customers. Subscribers. Yeah. Good but yeah, stuff, that's, huh? the, that's the that's um, the Shaq Beam Team second year. I I think I, I would, am going to take it. I would sell it. I mean, I'm uh, always a down the like move a car down the road, like take a profit. Well, here's the other thing too like is that. I think that car could easily be two grand for him. So now, it's not like he's going to be like, oh, I overpaid on this car. It's going to be worth more than oh, for sure. And, and the question for you is, and this is a question for those of you guys listening who are in this at some level other than just collecting, like whether it's actually flipping or investing or you know you're trying to Peter make a living on it, like. One of the questions is like, can you put that fifteen hundred to work in the time Absolutely. it would take for you to get an extra four hundred to actually and leverage more? Yeah, and I could. And yep. I'm 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 not in the business of keeping things. Yep. In my first year. Right. And by the way, I got one year anniversary probably in a couple weeks. Nice. Congrats. I gotta wait for Facebook to give me a memory. I'd be so, like one year ago. Because I know today. I posted like, eh, it's my first day, you know. So when that popped up, then I'll know. I I. Maybe it could go back in my feed and figure it's it out. It's got to be getting close. We're on the 25th. Right? Yeah, it's like the 5th or it's the 7th, something like that. Of, it was my first day. Of, February. Yeah. Really? February. Yeah. But I, Oh, you signed the lease. Where I got the keys right. yep. January 1st. Okay. And then yeah, I was trying to open it yes. first. But and you had, and yeah, I, I was here for that when you had a gathering of people. Yeah, yeah well, the gathering of people was technically the night before. That was a soft opening. You know, I didn't, wasn't that, that was the one where I was uh, in a parking lot at Lund's and Bailey's. Making a deal for a case of top series one. That's right. Yes. Yeah, like twenty minutes for the party. Nice. I was like, I was like, oh, this is weird. This <laughs> the is how this this parking is, lot deal. Is this gonna be my everyday deal? <laughs> <laughs> that's because I couldn't order it though. That goes back to what people talk about. They're like, oh, COVID made cars go crazy. I was making a parking lot deal for top series one because I couldn't order it. Right. So it, the stuff was sold out before COVID. Yeah, absolutely. So. We have we have one more football game in the NFL season's over, and then it's just basketball, baseball. What do you any any thoughts on uh, what's coming up for? Do are we gonna? We, I think actually we need. To, I would love to have feedback from those of you guys listening. I I would love to have feedback. I think we want to cover a baseball prospect Absolutely. podcast we coming do that up. Next one. Well, I was thinking as soon hours. as the Super Bowl is done, yeah, like maybe oh, kick yeah, off the, yeah, the one so after. so we have about a month until. Pitchers and catchers uh, report. Uh, yeah, it would be about like the third week of February ish. Yep. So, right. so and then that's really I when we already seen. It. I don't know. Did you notice this week one of the big movers has been Vlad Guerrero Jr. His yeah. cards have qua- his base tops chrome I think quadrupled. Wow, I didn't um, know the that. Picture of him being in shape, literally. Yeah, I'd heard about that. That he lost a bunch of weight. So in the last. Um, some some of the changes in the price. I'll just we'll hit oh, market, yeah. we'll market movers for a, for a second, and then we'll just kind of let the plane market land as movers. we start kind of you know. Plane land. We're at about ten thousand feet. Right I like now. it when the plane we're, lands. We're coming down. The number one. You know, I'm not afraid when the plane is landing, but I'm You're afraid not? to fly. You're afraid to fly because I'm like the closer we get to the ground, the closer I am to it all being over with. It all being over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the number one card percentage increase in the last fourteen days. Is not a guy in any of the four major sports. Hmm. He's the guy who just knocked out Conor McGregor. Oh wow! Dustin Poirier. He has a, a 2000, 2011 Topps Finest was his rookie. He had an okay. auto. Oh wow! And it's up two hundred percent. I like got a couple are, UFC they're about two hundred bucks yeah. that weren't selling for anything, and I looked them up like a couple weeks ago, and they were all you know selling. You know who else is on this list? Believe it or not, is. Uh, I don't believe it. Khabib, the other UFC, maybe the great, maybe him. maybe the greatest fighter of all time, him. never lost. He's the easiest way to make money ever. In be- I mean, <laughs> just, uh, this guy just doesn't lose. <laughs> so you, just, you just bet the Khabib, and you know, you, you never lose. Um, interestingly enough, I would have thought Vlad Guerrero, some of these baseball guys, would be on here, and we I don't see. I thought Bobby Shot might be on. None there. of them yet. Let me look up. Yeah, yeah but until Super up. Bowl is done, I don't. Know. I don't see that. Yeah, let's see what what's happening for sales volume by players. As far as are we starting to see the shift? I would guess basketball still going to just dominate. Yep, we still got Zion, right. Ja, LeBron, Luca, Kobe, Jordan, Trey Young, RJ, RJ Barrett, and Colin Sexton have yeah, cracked Colin the top Sexton's ten on for fire. volume. I actually just sent a one on one to get because they beat the net two times in a row. 
Yeah. And They're Colin Beckton has that that basically a meme now. The video where he looks like he's like staring into a woody garden. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where he's got his knees bent and it looks like he's stealing his soul from his eyes. I don't know who was coming up court. <laughs> Wow. I'm watching this thing. I'm like, what is going on? I remember, this is the guy who took on the entire Minnesota Gophers by himself. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was five against three, but the other two weren't doing anything. Yeah, no, Sexton. Now, the problem is Cleveland's just Cleveland. No, you know? Cleveland. I, no, you know what? I didn't write this down, but Cleveland's got a very interesting team now. You know you know who's probably the favorite right now, though, for the – one of the favorites for the MVP in the NBA? And not a lot of people are talking about them. They're actually, they're actually first place – in the East, okay. Joel Embiid yeah. for the Sixers. Oh, yeah. I mean, he – and here's what we've never seen. We've never seen him put together a full season. So, like, what does it look like when he's healthy? I mean, I he's I still going to sit a little like bit. The but second podcast. Yeah, he's very yeah. underrated. He's he, – he reminds you a little bit, though, of, like, he's the big men right now in the NBA don't get a lot of love. Like, Towns is, doesn't. You know is, though? He doesn't. I thought about this. The guy who goes uh, – uh, I was in a Facebook group, and he's like uh, – Never invest in big men; they don't sell. Yeah, and I'm like, well, only the big men sold, and until ten years ago, you, you tell me that's never going to change. And so, one of the ways, if you are a collector long term, maybe you should be buying the big men because they're out of favor right now. And if you're if you're just building a collection long term, you just want to build some stuff. Buy the guys while they're cheap. Why are you buying all the guards? Yeah, you know, there, totally there's many agree. ways of doing them. Totally agree. Yeah, the um, the shift, it's going to be interesting. I, I hear a lot. Some of the guys I run with that are into cards are really heavy into baseball. Yeah. And, like, right now, Luis Roberts' prices, mm-hmm. I think this is, like, maybe the last window. Like, if you're going to buy and sell during this season, like, his stuff is really I'm, I'm still I'm ramping still saying up. if you want to put the smart money, you put your money into Franco or not. Robert. Robert. Yeah, so you, you, you had like to go Wander. one of the two. I go Franco, nineteen year old making his debut. If he makes his debut, I mean, Wander I looks like the can't miss. He's the number one prospect right now yep. on baseball. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, and two years in a row, which has only happened twice before. Who's right? who's that? And I can't remember who the other two were. I read the article. Okay. Um, but he's gonna be. 19. Well, well, this is it just might a little, be twenty. This is a little he's appetizer. We'll cover. I'm gonna. We'll spend some time actually doing some good but research yeah, so and let's, we'll let's talk do, prospects. We're making plans about the podcast on the podcast. That's what we do in our so conversations. This is unscripted. Do John. next week will be just sort of a general. Oh, we could do next week because um, there's a dead period. Yeah, we, we do got a week. Next week. Yeah, we Either week. that or we do it the week after and, the Super Bowl. And kick it off. So, yeah. like, Super Bowl, we'll do it, talk about Super Bowl, and then the one after that. Yep. We'll figure that out as podcast. I'm excited. I mean, Maybe I think week. baseball hopefully is going to have fans in the stands. Hopefully we'll be able to see right. the Twins play. And the last the I saw, this was a few weeks ago, the commissioner did say, uh, he sent a report to the team saying to prepare for our 162-game season. Nice. So, that's the uh, at least that's a move in the right direction. They're shooting for it. And then um, this summer, uh, my main thing is Steve's convinced that the national is going to get canceled. No, Steve. No. Oh, I do want to. Not what up, Steve? No, no, not. Steve. Um, the we can't. Uh, I I don't see it just because I think after six months, if the vaccine works, right? So there's two mm-hmm. there's two issues with the vaccine. Is one is it going to work? We don't really know that yet. And, and we know two, some people have died recently after taking it. Yeah, so and then, well, then that's going to happen with pretty much any vaccine, too. Yeah. Not yeah. that the poo-poo. Of oh, by the way, we didn't even talk about that. Hank Aaron died. But then, two, oh, oh yeah. And then, two, like, is there going to be a zombie outbreak? Right. Now, so far, there hasn't been one, but who knows? Maybe it's a 90-day incubation period before we turn to zombies. And so, then we got bigger things to worry about than the Nationals. I don't know if that happens. But let's say, let's say. I think the National could easily happen with masks. Like, right now. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I think the National could easily happen with zombies. We just keep them out of the building and we're fine. <laughs> um, right now there's a show this weekend in Dallas yeah. that some guys from Minnesota are going now. to. Yep, And that one's going. And then we're going to go to a show this weekend in Eau Claire. Right. I think Steve's main point is that it's in Illinois. And so he, he, sure. he, he was approaching it from a jurisdiction standpoint. Sure. Now the question is, would they move it? If literally it came down to it, could they move it in could time? Could they move it to Cleveland? Yeah. Or could they move it to Minneapolis? Or could they move it to Milwaukee? Well, Minneapolis or? wouldn't work. They're probably just as bad as Illinois. Um, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Madison. Yeah, yeah, that might work. Just move it up the road. Mo- I mean, Milwaukee's an hour and a half north of Chicago, yeah. so it's you know that'd be interesting. I mean, we're so I would assume Ohio. We're so amped for it. By the way, 
I'll just drop this little nugget. I had a guy right. walk into the shop today who was a customer of ours. And I don't know if he listens to the podcast or not, but he goes, hey, can I chat with you quick in the back? He goes, I may have bit off more than I can chew here. He goes, but I just got a lead on three unopened 1986 Fleer basketball boxes in, in northern Minnesota. Okay. Uh, very possible. I'm like, I'm like, yes, please. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But anyway, believe it or not, the, those boxes, I was like, oh, what are those at? Like 70, 80,000, you know? No. 120 yeah. to 180. Yeah. One box. The guy's got three of them. This guy's... An older gentleman, he's had him in a safety Might deposit have box forever. I'm like, well, let's let's roll. So maybe I'll have an update that we bought three eighty six Fleer boxes. Yeah, you, would you would you have to stop at the bank for that then, or I, would you be able to swing it? You think? Oh no, we have the money to buy. Okay. With yeah. what he's asking for him, yeah. Oh, oh fair enough. Yeah, I and I think that. he's at a fair enough price that, like, there's pl- – now, the the risk is I would want to see the boxes in person. Right. I would make it contingent on them actually getting wrapped by baseball card exchange, right. and then we would yeah, help him – we'd help facilitate that deal. Yeah. We're going to send them baseball card exchange. As long as they're authentic and, then and they're not tampered. And what you can easily do, too, is you can just – you're going to spend a little bit of money, but it's enough money where it works. Uh, put it in escrow. Yeah. Just find an escrow company. It's there. That way, you don't control the money. Yep. The seller doesn't control the money. Yep. The escrow agent literally releases the money when a term gets filled. So yep. you can go, okay, we're going to send it here. It gets wrapped. They're good. Yep. The escrow agent releases it. That way, you can put your customer at or ease. Your seller at ease. Well, and like if they wanted, account. like, if they wanted a down payment no, yeah, of yeah. sorts that could but, be. Like, yeah. literally use an escrow agent for something like that. Yeah. You can't. So that could go back on it. That, that could be Nobody exciting. And, you, you know, one of the things that's interesting, we had a conversation, is some of the boxes that have sold for more are the ones that have a bunch of Jordan stickers. Because one of the things they do when you get them wrapped is he'll tell you every single sticker. No, because he can see Because you can see them. So he'll say, like, the boxes that have sold for a lot, there'll be four or five Jordan rookies yeah, uh, stickers. Yeah. Which, by the way, do you see what the sticker prices are? Yeah, up I looked that up because my customer has a low-grade one I got, PSA I, right now. I have a six. I'm like, wow, I might want to see. Yeah, this one might be like a three. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I think but I see. But that Jordan sticker as well as the Jordan um, base card, doesn't matter what the grade is, just grade it. Don't know yeah, exactly you gotta, you gotta, what it is. I mean, Jordan, everybody will know what it is. Jordan rookies right now are literally. What's the one the last I saw? Fifteen hundred for one. Um, a one. Yeah, one. Wow. Because they had bumped up quite a bit. They yeah, went I mean, a thousand six months ago. I mean, this blows me away. I have a six sticker. Last one just sold for two thousand yeah. dollars. When I when I acquired that card, the value was like two hundred, two fifty. Less than, year, less, than year, less than a year. Less than a year. Less than a year. Yeah. Ten times and less Ten than a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sports cards are a bit of an investment, believe it or not. Yeah, there's some people really doing well in it, and I think. <laughs> so how far are we in, Evan? We are. Wow. Man, I got a clock on me. Man, you just know. Every man. time I'm it's like, like how the, much we got? It's exactly 90 minutes. It's like after you've done it 13 times. You actually, no, I was. I think I said that podcast five or something. And I got it right. There's some internal clock that says, I think this is the part of the phone call Yeah. where I'm like, I got to go. All right, John, we're done. <laughs> then I, then I, no, usually the phone call was a couple hours. Yeah. So I'm trying to trying to be a little conscientious about how long it goes. That's good. All right, you got anything else pressing no. before we uh, get going? Shoot us your guys' comments. Make sure you subscribe below. We'd love yes. to have you send oh, and share and the – please comment about whether Tom Brady – is a better analytical quarterback than Peyton Manning. Analytical quarterback. Tom Brady is the smartest quarterback to ever play the game. He's the best no, let's, quarterback let's, to ever play the game. The He's the most clutch athlete in the no, history no, 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 no. of Don't sports. Add a bunch of other crap He's the to goat it. of goats Clint, of goats. Clint, that's not the question. The question is all this other. When I walk up to the center and I'm looking at the defense. Tom. Who can read it better? Tom Brady. Peyton Manning and Tom, Tom, Brady. Tom Brady. I want to hear what people. Think. I mean, to be honest, it's. They're probably so, – I bet they have some things they're each better at. I think Brady – he has a lot more experience now. Think how long – think about this for a second. Yeah, think enough. about this. How long has Manning been retired? Uh, not that long. Has it been three or four years? Yeah, because he's not three. He's not in the Hall of Fame yet. Think about yeah. this. Brady – I bet my prediction is when Manning gets inducted, Brady will still be playing. Well, I'll put it this way. When Manning was at the end of his career, he was a hobbled shell of what he, he used to be because of the neck problems, the next, yeah. and he, he had physical limitations on him, whereas Tom Brady hasn't been rocked 
and had a well, here's the major deal. injury. And, and, you know, part of that's his training. It's all flexibility, yeah. like injury. But again, injury. that's not the question. The question is, I walk up to the center. What's the defense doing? Where do I go? Tom knows How more do I do about reading defenses than anyone who's ever played the game. Except for Peyton Manning. All right. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Until uh, next time.